Good afternoon to you. Mark out of HurricaneTrack.com here with your hurricane outlook and discussion. It's June 20th, 2021. I hope your Sunday is going well. Happy Father's Day to all the dads out there, me being the father of seven children. Yes, seven children. Um, and once you pick your jaw up off the floor after hearing that, yes, it's true. And it keeps you very busy. I don't care if you have one or seven like I do. Never a dull moment. So happy Father's Day to all the other dads out there. Now let's talk about the tropics and the headline there. Claudette definitely bringing major impacts to the southeast as I thought would be the case. Flooding rain, the rip currents along the coastline, and severe weather, some tornadoes, even in the North Carolina, uh, eastern North Carolina region. Claudette doing all of that dirty work. There's the remnant, remnant circulation of it. Big moisture feed tapped all the way down to the Gulf and streaming all the way up into Atlantic Canada. Just kind of connected everything is. Uh, but yeah, lots of flash flooding. You saw the video probably out of Tuscaloosa and very dramatic video with that and uh, the loss of life along I-65 from that wreck. If you heard about that, uh, nine, ten people unfortunately killed, probably hydroplaning. Yikes. I mean, this is what I talk about when I talk about impacts and people having to be aware of this, that it does not take a major hurricane to cause major problems. And it really does pain me when I read about these things, whether it's one person killed in rip currents or, like I said, multiple fatalities in this accident on Interstate 65 that I read about in Alabama um, and then the flooding in Tuscaloosa. You know, the weather is bigger than us every time. I don't care. It is. Whether it's a depression or a Cat 5 hurricane, it's bigger than us. And we have to respect it and be aware of it. So here's what's going on. we got the remnants there, like I said, of Claudette. We'll talk about this more in a moment. Tropical wave, easy to spot right there. we got to watch this as it comes across the Caribbean and ends up in this area. Some modeling way out into time suggesting that we might want to keep our eyes peeled to that area, which we would anyway because it's hurricane season. But that right there is a piece of energy that could end up over here. X marks the spot that maybe it tries to flare up over there several days down the road. You never know. Uh, we'll keep our eyes open to that as time progresses. Uh, another surge of African dust coming off of the Sahara with another strong tropical wave, the Atlantic. Fairly well seeded now with these tropical waves, these easterly waves of energy. Definitely something to watch as we progress through the next several days and a couple of weeks. All right, national radar shot here from Mark Nissenbaum's site over at Florida State University. Still some rain showers lingering across the northern Gulf and a few dotted heavier showers here along portions of the I-10 corridor. And then there's the circulation associated with the remnants of Claudette and these individual pockets of cells moving out ahead. Some of those tornadic in nature. One near Williamston, North Carolina earlier. At least I saw the warning for that uh, just a little while ago. So active weather moving across the southeast. This will move off the coast here over the next several hours and into the Atlantic where it may get re-energized enough to be classified as a tropical storm once again. So the vorticity signature, let's zoom in on it, take a look at that. Fairly well pronounced, and you can see that very well too on the visible satellite imagery. Uh, but this whole package of energy going to move off in this direction and eventually up towards Atlantic Canada and the Gulf Stream waters out there across the western Atlantic. Probably just enough to give this a shot, at least a shot at restrengthening water temperatures, basically 80, 81, 82 degrees through here. And as it gets close to the Pamlico Sound, where the water temperatures are nice and warm, there's a lot of latent heat there, humidity, energy for it to tap into, um, it, it certainly could. It could ramp back up and become a named, well, it's already named, but a tropical storm once again, We'll wait and see about that. Uh, one thing I wanted to point out, though, is the shear is still decreasing in its pathway right through here. That's the low pressure area. There's Claudette right there. And so it's in a favorable area. And look, it's the only favorable area around for the most part. Everything else is yellow and red. And this is what I'm talking about when we, you know, we mention people look at the models and you say, well, there's nothing out there and the models aren't showing anything developing or there's shear everywhere and 
You only need a small geographic region of favorable conditions, and in this case, it was close to home, if you will. All the people that call the Northern Gulf uh, home down there, Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, Florida Panhandle, uh, yesterday as Claudette made landfall. Yeah, that little favorable window, when that window opens and it happens to be over you, that can be a problem. That's the point here. And so there's that favorable area moving along with Claudette. And as these move in tandem generally out into the Atlantic, there's an opportunity that Claudette could take advantage of that and strengthen once again on its way out. So let's see what the modeling shows here. This is the GFS from earlier today, the 850 millibar 12Z run. There's the vorticity signature of our tropical system earlier today sitting over Georgia. Now it has traversed a little farther to the east. So let's see what the GFS shows. A little bit of energy associated with it moving through Charlotte Mecklenburg area maybe by tonight, at least the center of it. But the effects are going to be more on the south side. So down in the sand hills of North Carolina across the coastal plain, the PD River Valley and that region uh, of South Carolina, Orangeburg down towards Charleston, Florence, Lumberton in North Carolina, all that area, eastern North Carolina, going to be stormy tonight. So keep that NOAA weather radio or your EAS on your phone. Don't mute your phone or whatever. You want to get those warnings. I know I would if there's a tornado coming. The threat of that could happen in the overnight hours tonight. So seriously, be aware of that. And then this moves on through tomorrow afternoon, getting close to the water. Yeah, a little bit of reinvigoration there as it heads on out, maybe picking up some baroclinic uh, energy, a little bit of a boost from the atmosphere there. So yeah, it might become a tropical storm, tried and true, bona fide, whatever you want to call it, once again, especially if it can stay close to the northwest wall of the Gulf Stream. Notice, too, the strong Bermuda High sitting out here, big subtropical ridge. Look at that clockwise flow around it. All this deep moisture feed coming through, uh, brisk trade winds, but not on, you know, not out of the ordinary, coming through the Caribbean, around the backside of that into the Gulf, sultry summertime weather for sure. Classic signature of a hot, muggy summer ahead. I saw Brian McNulty, if you know his work, uh, down in Florida, in Miami there, saying the dew point last night was like 80 degrees or something. I mean, whew, you could just wring the moisture out of the air uh, with this type of setup. That is not surprising. So this is what the GFS shows. Let's take a look at the Euro. And remember, the Euro had been pretty aggressive with this. It's kind of backed off as of late, kind of not singing quite the same tune, which is fine with me. We don't need any mischief moving through my area you know, knocking out the power or whatever. You know, who needs that, especially when it's summertime? So this is what the Euro shows. This was this morning. This is tomorrow morning. And it does kind of fire it back up again right over the Pamlico Sound there uh, as it heads out. So anybody out on the Outer Banks, sorry, I bumped the microphone there. The microphone's right there, just off camera. See, it's a nice professional mic. Hopefully it does a good job. But when I bump it, it's probably ringing your ears. <laughs> anyway, uh Fisher, fishermen, uh, the people in Hatteras Village, Ocracoke, the fishing fleets, that's what I'm trying to say. Uh, by tomorrow afternoon, seriously, keep an eye on this as Claudette and the remnants move through. Could be some very squally conditions as this happens. So anybody out on the Pamlico Sound, the Albemarle, the waters just off of Ocracoke, Moorhead City, Beaufort, be careful. We don't need the Coast Guard out of Hatteras to come rescue you. I mean, they'll do it because that's what their job is, and they're glad to do it. But we'd rather you just stay safe. So keep this in mind. That little pocket of energy could be a doozy uh, tomorrow morning. This is 12Z, so yeah, that's tomorrow morning. By Tuesday, it's out into the open Atlantic, and you can't really see it there on this particular map extent. That there is worth watching little tropical wave action. That's the one I was showing you that's way over here today. Moving on through, and we'll have to see. This one could come through the islands down here and create some flooding conditions for Barbados, Trinidad, Tobago, the windwards as a whole. And then, yes, we're going to have to watch this as it gets eventually into the Caribbean. And what happens over here 
at about a week's time, we'll see. It's still too early to really talk about it. No reason to start speculating and, you know, whatever. I know people can go look at the long-range models all they like, but it's too far out in time. It's just more of a, well, yeah, it's hurricane season, so I guess if something develops that makes sense, we'll deal with it when the time comes. I'll talk about it more tomorrow. Um, it's just a signal. You know, there's some noise out there, if you will. And we know the Atlantic is seeded with tropical wave energy, so yeah, it's possible. And we'll talk about it as we need to. All right? All right, have a great rest of your Sunday evening, afternoon, whatever the case may be. And I'll be back with more for you tomorrow, of course. Hey, don't forget, got the podcast called Hurricane Season, the podcast. Spotify, Apple, Google, all the podcast places, at least most of them. And um, hosted by Anchor, pretty cool service. Doesn't cost me anything, and I think that's cool. Works for me. And um, it's called Hurricane Season, the podcast. Search for it every morning. I give you a little briefing, usually very short, as to what I'm looking at for the day ahead. On Twitter, at Hurricane Track. And you're watching on YouTube, so if you're new, subscribe, like, share, tell people what we're doing here. I appreciate it. It's good to see this grow and get the word out to more people and get them hurricane ready and weather aware. That's the ticket here. That's what we're trying to do. All right, I'm done. Have a great rest of your Sunday. I'm Mark Sutteth, HurricaneTrack.com. We'll talk again tomorrow.